Silence! It's time! It's time! It's time for another episode of the Drunk Dash Nerds Podcast. Can you dig it, dig it sucker? Grab a six pack, sit back, and prepare to laugh. It's Drunk Dash Nerds Podcast. Podcast. Grab a six pack, sit back, and prepare to laugh. It's Drunk Dash Nerds Podcast. Podcast. Grab a six pack, sit back, and prepare to laugh. It's Drunk Dash Nerds Podcast. Podcast. Grab a six pack, sit back, and prepare to laugh. It's Drunk Dash Nerds Podcast. Podcast. Hello, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to episode 390 of the Drunk Testers Podcast. I'm always always I'm Tyler. Joining me with the man, the myth, the legend himself, Sir Colonel Gables. What's up, buddy? Dude, I'm rising from the ashes and I'm feeling good to go. Like a phoenix? That's how this week is just going, man. I'm like the phoenix rising from the pits of the fire pit and just going through and just rising up into the ether and oh man i'm just losing my train of thought now yeah, but man. anyway <laughs> it's like a weird randy you're like doing ultimate warrior promo but in a randy savage voice <laughs> <laughs> i'll tell you man i'm going to the rocket ship and i'm gonna get the fuel i'm gonna do this mm, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah i'm in a good mood this week man it's like everything's playing its course everything's all folding into place and yeah, I was telling Ty a little bit about it and stuff, but uh, I'm not going to share any like personal details on what I'm initially doing. I'm actually going to break it on Facebook, probably like in an, maybe like in another who knows how long. But uh, let's just say it's just good things, good yes. things for Colonel Gables. And for people wondering and been asking me for over seven years now, no, you're not finally getting nudes of Gables on the internet. Uh, uh, <laughs> yeah. No, trust me, nobody wants to see that. Anyway. <laughs> I've seen them. You want to see them, but I'm not going to share them because you won't let me do it. <laughs> if you help me get to a $1,000 in Extra Life, I will send you Gable nudes. Oh, hell no. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, man, Doing I'm... it for the kids, Gables. Sorry. Uh, uh, no. No. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, man, it, other, okay. than the, other than the work. Other than the personal stuff, it's like, I've had a good gaming week. I kid you not, man. The gaming week has been pretty fucking fantastic, if I do say so myself. I haven't had a gaming week like this, or anything gaming-affiliated-wise, positive like this, for at least a couple of years. At least. Nice. But how have you been doing, Tyler? Uh, You know, doing, uh, one second here. One second. <sighs> doing better now. Uh, <laughs> just cracked open a beer. Uh, you know, doing okay. Uh, you know, it's been a, uh, you know, I've been, I've been in a weird, like almost kind of an opposite from you when it comes to game. Really this like, this like past month or so where I've just haven't been in like a gaming mood. It's, it's, it's been going on for a little while. Um, probably longer than that. Probably, you know, but I just, I'm not really, I don't know if it's just like, I'm waiting for the onslaught coming in November of games. Uh, I don't know if like I play Madden still, you know, I, I still play a handful of games every week, of course, but that's not, I don't really count that so much as gaming. But um, yeah, I don't know. I, I've just nothing's tickling my fancy this week. So really lately, like I play Marvel Avengers. And I just didn't really get into that. Saints Row, not really get into that. Um, you know, so I don't know if I'm just like holding on. I think, I think part of it is, you know, I don't have much to play coming extra life. So I'm holding off on playing games. That may be the thing uh, as well, Tyler, because what it kind of sounds like to me, it's like you're at that point where you're waiting for November, there's an onslaught of games that are going to be coming in, and then with Extra Life, it's like, okay, you don't want to go full in because you don't want to burn yourself out or finish something yeah. too soon, you know? Yeah, because I think I'm, I'm definitely, like, I, I, you know, it's like, I don't want, I want stuff to play for Extra Life, but also it's like, I don't really want to start anything because, I mean, the week after Extra Life is, I mean, we talked about it before, it's, just, it's a murderous row of awesome triple a games so um even the week after that so yeah i'm just like kind of just like i kind of really want to jump into this because i know i'm not gonna finish the kind of stuff um you know it's because it doesn't help them playing like games that you know require a decent chunk of time like i probably could finish them if i really like really wanted to but um i don't know i've just been like a more of a um like watching tv show kind of frame it's you know I'm, I'm, I w- i've been like fun. they're really the only thing i'm like fiending for is like a good like scary type of game like an evil within style game and they're just we're not getting one this year um mm-hmm. and i mean you know so it's like i don't know i think that's part of it too is like i, I guess well i guess next week i'd get a 
I think on Friday, um, the Little Hope, uh, the creators of Until Dawn, that game comes out. So maybe that'll tickle my fancy. But okay, um, yeah. So that, that I don't know. I'm just you know, it's not there's spoiler, not anything for me to talk about when it comes to uh, gaming. What I've been playing this week, but uh, I mean on, on the positive side, um, you know, we have Extra Life is just two weeks away. Gables. Yes. Um, so uh, if you want those nudes, start donating. Click oh, that no, donate. No, no. <laughs> oh, I'm gonna no, make no, the no. podcast titles uh, <laughs> "Money for Gables Nudes." Uh, but if uh, we get money for that, I am not going to fucking <laughs> honor those. I'll tell you guys before that. <laughs> you heard. You heard. I'm gonna edit it so it sounds like you say I will honor those. Oh God. <laughs> I'm gonna cut it out. I'm gonna cut out the knot. I'm gonna just. But I will. Uh, but uh, anyways, no. Uh, just kidding. But um, actual life. Yeah, it's two weeks away. Uh, less than two weeks away. Um, at this point we'd still be in recovery mode um we got to figure out how we're going to record that episode that week because i don't know if we're going to be in the mood to record an episode the day what we could do is kind of like what we do with similar times where we may record two episodes in one not sitting that's true we could figure something out um for that and push one out for the next week yeah i mean uh we'll talk about it off air but uh yeah we we can go with some ideas but um yeah, it's two weeks away. Uh, if you, I mean, I'm sure if you've been listening to us for a long time, you know it's my least favorite favorite day of the year. Uh, and we, this is my ninth year to be Gable's eighth year. Yep. Uh, it's a extra, it's a charity where all the money we raise goes to Children's Miracle Network hospitals. Um, we get to pick the ones any hospital we want to in North America. Um, I always do for Iowa City. If you've watched any Iowa game or watched any college football at all, you probably know about the wave. That um, every, there's a children's hospital. They built an extension where the kids in the hospital can actually watch the Iowa game. Nice. And after the at the after the end of every first quarter, everybody in the stadium turns around and waves. And I got to actually uh, be a part of that last year when I went to go see an Iowa game, which was pretty awesome. Um, so yeah, so all the money that uh, I raise goes there. Uh, Gables, what, what do you do? You do Seattle? What do you do? I'm sorry, I forget. Wait for yes, yes for extra life stuff. It's Seattle yeah. Children's Hospital. Yep. This will be my eighth year in a row doing so. I know last year I actually did have a chance to not talk too much with them, but they did acknowledge me a lot in terms of being thankful of like helping them, like so, like on Twitter or whatsoever. But uh, I, it's it's near and dear, you know. It's a close affiliated children's hospital. I have, I know I've had like family gone to Seattle Children's, like to get help and do this and do that. But I absolutely love like supporting the local community stuff and. What better way than support, like, uh, a charitable hospital that is very much hardworking, very much, like, you know, a, a source of a lot of positivity for kids, you know? Yeah. Yeah. So, um, you could, if you are interested in, in doing it, go to extra-life.org uh, and sign up. Uh, you get to pick your hospital like a set of choice. Um, if, you're inter- um, if not, if you know someone that might be interested, tell them about it, please. Uh, share that with them, extra-life.org. If you want to donate to us, um, we are we are both on there. I am Tyler Courtney. He is Gable. Uh, God, My name God, is Gabe. Name is yeah, you're Gabe Bagno. Bagno, thank you. <laughs> I, I'm so I don't think I've called you Gabe in like five years. <laughs> well, you can thank Jake so, for that because he came up with a code name of Colonel Gables. <laughs> no, no, no. Actually, that was Justin that gave you the. Wait, I call it. Justin. I started calling. I started calling you Gaby, which you got mad about. You didn't like that. Oh, no. And then I'm like, all right. So I started calling you Gables. And then Justin coined the phrase Colonel Gables. Oh, so, uh, yeah. Yeah. Oh, so, uh, right. yeah. So, and ever since then, it's, uh, it's, it's stuck. So I don't think, I, and that was like five years ago. So I don't think <laughs> that's I called That's my brand you. now, man. That's Colonel Gables. Yeah, that is your brand <laughs> for sure. Uh, it's like, what's, G- what's Gables' real name? What could it be? I don't know. Uh, but yeah, so yeah, is Gabe, if you don't want a bag, just say no. Um, <laughs> still one of the funniest things you've ever said, Gables. Um, uh, but, uh, yeah, so donate to us if you want to, uh, on there. Uh, but it, just as well, if you want to sign up yourself or, uh, tell people to sign up, uh, or just tell people about it, that's just as good. Um, I don't necessarily care if the, I don't think you need one. If the, if the money goes directly to us, that's awesome. If it doesn't and it goes somewhere else. That's fine. I'm just all about raising money for the kids. I think, oh man, I can't remember the total last year, but I want to. It was, it was like I think I want to say like 11 million last year. I think so. In and that was despite like having like uh, a lot of initial uh, hiccups last year because of the whole like uh, I think it was a DDoS thing that happened yeah, early on that kind of knocked us like a lot of the streamers off. 
Yeah, yeah. So it's it's been very frustrating twice now. I think it happened in 2015. Yep. And then again in uh, 2019. I remember where that. Some douchebags uh, decided to uh, DDoS a children's charity on the biggest day of the year for them, the, the day they build up to all year round. Um, they but decided to yeah. take the website down. But despite so, all that, we they did we did end up helping raise a record number in terms of the donations. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah, we break the record every year, so it's incredible. It doesn't. It's like it, it's not as a big of a as big of a jump, but like because I think like the first year it was like three hundred twenty thousand, then it was like uh, just under a million, then it was uh, like two million, then it was four million, then it was like you know. So it's getting a little harder to top that number every year. So. But it's awesome that I, I, every year, the last few years, I'm like, there's no way. And then, we, like, I, you know, we got the 10 million a few yeah. years ago. So now I understand. It's, yeah. You know, it, it is definitely going to be hard this year, especially because of the whole COVID yeah. stuff and, like, everything else. So it's like, I'm not really concerned about breaking a record. I'm more so concerned about, okay, I'm going to do my part to help out when I can yes. help out with. I still got to go through and schedule some bit of the game stuff after we go through Resident Evil 6. <laughs> yeah yeah i have a couple ideas for games i've, I've downloaded some games like I, the um you know i fuck it we'll just jump into some little like little things here but like okay. i don't know i i think the, the big key thing is like when you go into extra life is have like a plethora of games that you don't just pick like these are my four games i'm gonna play like have like, like 10 ready check your like going into it like i always like i'm a ma- like i'm a madman the week of where i like check to make sure all my games are updated like like even like games like like overwatch i'll make sure that i can play the game in a couple of years probably but like at any point in time we might get a group together uh, like a rocket league i haven't played that in a long time but at any point in time you might have some people jump on you want to play some rocket league or something so and then you go to play it's happened to me before when you go to play and it's like ah shit there's a four gigabyte download or there's a 10 gigabyte <laughs> download because i haven't played this game in a year so it's just like little things like that you know go in go, if you're in a ps4 or xbox whatever like Go on there and click the button and, and say ch- and check for updates because uh, that uh, that will save you some you know some heart heartache and pain there when you go to play a game you can't and then like I said you know make sure you have like a bunch of games ready to go like I've I've downloaded um, uh, there's you know Resident Evil Six is the big one I think that's going to take up probably I'm, I'm expecting uh, probably eight to twelve hours of our day um, yeah. so that that's good we'll have that I mean I don't know if it's good because it's Resident Evil Six but we have a game uh scheduled to play but um yeah like, you know have have more games right because especially when you get to like the nitty like the end there it's like it's just trying to find something that like you can that'll keep your attention and keep you awake is is tough like i don't know how many times where I've, like i've cycled through like five or six games like just trying to find something that will stick that, that can keep me awake that can keep me ready um now keep my attention you know stuff like that so it's like it's always nice to like even like a game like like if it's a game like you're, I don't know. I guess I'll check it out. Or uh, you know, if it's a game you like you've had like in your backlog for a while. Have it on the ready, man, because it might you know it might come in handy. Like I've told a story before, like Evil Within. Like that was a game I, it came out like a couple weeks before Extra Life, and I was like, I played it a couple hours of. It. I'm like, I'm not liking this at all. And then like, I just threw it in on a whim just because I needed something. To, like I was looking for something to play, and ended up playing through like 80 percent of that game and on extra life that was like a you know big i ended up loving that game and also been a, it made a big you know made a big change for extra uh, for extra life for me and like save the night for me because I, I remember that year too my internet went out so i was like oh. so on top of that uh I, I remember i think our modem broke that morning like like four oh. hours in my modem broke i think it was like i think that was 2015 2014 that happened and uh that was 20, 2014 was was a ddos attack i remember that now and our modem broke that morning so there was like no way we couldn't get it fixed and wasn't you know anything like that. We were just I was just SOL, and I was just like couldn't play any of the games online with you guys. So that was like my my saving grace that year. But I remember at, like middle of the night, like not being able to play games with anybody. Like that was I remember too though. Like I just trying to find. I remember like jumping through like Smash Brothers or fucking uh, was it Bravely Default? Like things like just random things like jumping through, just trying to find something right. that will kind of you know you like. You know, it's hard sometimes as a gamer to find something that tickles your fancy, even though you have 20 games in front of you. So it's like, you know, especially when you're 18 hours in, sleep deprived, your ass hurts. Um, and, you know, you're just, all you want to do is take a nap and you can't, you know. So I don't know. I mean, that's like little tips like that, like that will make a big difference. And also, like, don't go crazy on caffeine uh, and eat 
right. Um, that's the biggest thing. Don't like go heavy on carbs. Um, I've told the story before. I think, uh, the one year I didn't, um, I completed it the next day or the morning after, like I woke up, but I literally, I've told the story before. I think it was 2016. The only year I wasn't able to do it. Uh, I think I was like 18 or 19 hours in literally fell asleep in my chair playing, uh, Oh God, what was that record game? It was, it was a terrible game. It was, it was so bad. And I ended up like, I fell asleep uh, for like two hours and got stuck in a loop of loading and dying, loading and dying. <laughs> I, remember the, I remember the big issue was like the loading times in that game. And the game was broken too. The game was, uh, the loading times in that game were so fucking long. And I, I fell asleep in a loading screen and just got stuck in that loop of dying and loading, dying and loading, dying and loading. And then I woke up and I'm like, oh, and I looked, it was like, I'd been like two hours. So, um, yeah, so it's just, I don't know, just try to, you know, find things that will k- keep you alert. Things sometimes that like you want to find something too that's not too easy to play. It's not too boring, and like some and something that's like you know maybe playing like a Call of Duty when you're 20 hours in and it's four in the morning is not the best idea. Like you need something that requires uh, quick reflexes, but don't play some you know, don't play Picross. You know at four in the morning when you need to stay alert. Like you got to find a balance. Like I, I I like to play like a couple games of Madden because it's kind of fun playing Madden when you're. You know, like it's it, you know, because I'm I'm up top. You know, everybody I've talked about forever. Like I'm, that's like the one game I'm like legitimately really good at, and it's like it's kind of fun to play the game in a way for me. Uh, you know, when I'm it's four or five o'clock in the morning, and I've got two three more hours left of extra life, and you just kind of see how my motor skills still work uh, at that point in time. So uh, yeah, I don't know, and you know, and eat healthy. Like I said, don't eat like uh, also 2016 the year I fell asleep. All I ate that entire day, I, I fucking ate a, um, I remember ate a giant thing. I went, I went, uh, got food ordered and I got this giant thing of like mac and cheese. It was oh, really God. great mac and cheese. I can't remember where it was from. Uh, I ordered it from, but I ate this giant thing of mac and cheese, all carbs. And then I ate a fuck ton of hot pot or not hot box pizza rolls that day. So not, does not help. You know, uh, I'm talking like eat some good snacks, not like sugar, sugary snacks. You know, you don't want to eat fucking Twizzlers and uh, Rolos and whatever kids eat these days, Almond Joys or whatever. Um, you know, you want to eat like, you know. Prunes. <laughs> yeah, prunes. Yeah, fucking millennials, man, are the worst. Um, Tide Pods. Uh, but, uh, you know, eat like apples, peanuts. Like in, like good little, like that's something I always like. To, I don't eat like a lot of peanuts. I'm not a big peanut guy. But on Extra Life, I always like to have like, I buy like a little thing of peanuts. It's a good little snack. You know, it's a good gaming snack. Cause like, you know, I like to have my snacks on gaming, you know, next to me. Um, so that's a good one too. You know, it's, and it's not, you know, super sugary and it's, it, it kind of, there's a lot, there's a little bit of protein in there. So it helps. And then like bananas and apples, there's, you know, there's that, there's that real non artificial sugar that helps. And then also kind of space, like I said, you want to have caffeine, but you want to space it out. Uh, I've definitely had years where I have, like, I went super crazy on the caffeine and kind of jacked myself up a little too much early in the, in there. And then there was like that, yeah, that caffeine crash um, that hits you about, you know, and so, you know, now you're 12 hours in and you're fucking can barely keep your eyes open. And like, it's, it's only like four o'clock in the afternoon and I'm, I'm ready for a nap. You know, it's like, you gotta find that and you know, and you know, get, have yourself a, a late coffee, uh, you know, get, your, get yourself some coffee at midnight or something, depending on when you start. I don't know. But you know, if you say like you started like around six or seven, eight o'clock, in the morning, you know, get, get yourself a copy. And I, I always like to take a nice shower because um, you can obviously take breaks. And that's something I always tell people is like, because I'll tell people about it. I was like, you play, like, do you not like go to the bathroom or anything? Like, no, it's not like a little 24 hours. Like you probably actually play like 22, 23 hours combined. But it's like, go for a walk, you know, take, you know, I'm, you know, I plan on taking Louis for a bunch of walks uh, throughout the day. Get myself, plus it's going to be cold. So that's going to wake my ass up outside. Um, you know, things, things like that, you know, that's going to help you. I like taking, like I said, take a nice shower middle of the night you know that kind of gives you that kind of wakes you up don't take a hot shower though take a nice cool shower like you know nice you know not cold but w- a warmish shower uh you know kind of makes you feel better because especially because you've been sitting there in your own slob for so many hours you know again that helps me but uh yeah things like that i i you know I, this you know this, we've been doing this a lot of years so um so you know things like we, things we've learned over the years we, we've we've learned a lot of do's and don'ts um but what about you, Gables? Any tips you want to throw in there? Well, yeah, definitely have like a, a list or some, or at least a slew of games that you know that you want to try to get to. An honest to God suggestion I would recommend people is take it every couple hours, you know, 
play a game for like a couple hours, give yourself a little mini break, and then all of a sudden like continue on for another couple hours and stuff. Treat it sort of like you would do when you're working a job that's like eight hours a day where, okay, first you're going to go through, first couple hours, have a break, another couple hours, maybe have something to eat or something like that, another couple hours, repeat the same break sort of aspect and stuff. So that way when you actually do go through the whole 24-hour stuff, you'll feel more tempted to go through and play your stuff instead of being just slogged down for about four or five hour stretches of just you sitting on your ass just like uh getting tired <laughs> yeah yeah because i mean yeah that's a good way of putting it like think of it almost like i mean we're playing games 24 straight, straight hours but it is work i mean it's not easy i'm not joking when i say it's also my least favorite day like i there's a there's a point in that day for me every year and i think for a decent amount of people where you just hate playing video games it's like i don't even want to play and there's been years when extra life was over and i'm like I didn't play games for three, four days. I'm like, I had no want to play games. And there's sort of been some years where I woke up and I went right back to playing games. Yeah, um, I've actually done that two years in a row. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Because I remember, I remember one year I, I, I woke up and like, I was like, I, you know, I've slept for a few. And it's, yeah, that's a hard, that's like, you know, I'll get, well, anyways, going back to what I was saying. But like, um, you know, like I, there's been a couple years where I just woke up from like my little nap I took and then went jumped right back into uh, and you know, play turn turn on fucking NCAA or Madden and played some more games. Or there's been definitely years though where it's just like, oh, God, I don't even want to look at my my PS4 right now or anything like that. You know, I don't even want to look at my 360 or whatever. So um, and then you know, if you can, if you're able to uh, get uh, some people in a party chat that helps. And I've always, I swear by this every year, you got to have the ringers. You got to have the people that aren't in extra life. But that will jump into the party chat with you because, like, yeah, no I mean, there's been years where you know we've been in a party chat the whole time, and we're all miserable at like midnight, and it's just like we're like we're we're good, but we're like a little tired. But then you have someone jump in, you have some people jump in with you playing Rocket League, or uh, my my favorite story is like you know when one year like um, at like four in the morning, Justin got off work, and uh, he jumped in and played Friday Thirteenth with us yeah. for a couple hours, and it was like actually like the one year where I where I finished it and I was like, actually like I can just kind of keep like, I'm fine. with just kind of keep going for a little bit longer. Oh, no shit, uh, right. And so, uh, but he jumped in and like, he, you know, you know he was a little tired because he had work, but he was still, but he wasn't, you know, he, he hadn't been up for 24 straight hours. I mean, maybe, I don't know. Justin's weird like that. Sometimes he'll be up for two, three straight days and like, you wouldn't know it. Um, but um, like, did you just throw a bunch of cocaine or something? What the fuck's wrong with you? Man? But anyways, uh, but um, you know, he'll like, he jumped in and like, just chit chat with us. He brought good energy and good vibes. And like it, like that was the ease. I think that was 20, I want to say 2018. Yeah, 2018. 2018 did that. Yeah. Cause I was playing uh Assassin's Creed uh, Odyssey that year and he jumped in and just, you know, played games with them and bullshit with us, stayed in there with us. And like I said, good vibes, good energy. And we were, we, we made it through no problem. And, uh, um, and find a, a good time that works for you. Like Gables, I think, as the perfect freaking extra life schedule every year where he like you start up around like what in the, about midnight every year well here's what i do the past couple of years and even bleeding before that and stuff before that i would begin like around say 8 a.m or whatever the hell or sometimes like a little bit like earlier than that and stuff and go all the way but the trouble that I kept having is uh, i would be up until like about eight something the next morning or something yeah. and i would want to sleep like in the middle of the day. So what I had been doing the past couple of years, as soon as I would get off of work that Friday, I would try to fall asleep incredibly early, like around maybe 5 to around 7 o'clock at night. Then I'd wake up around midnight. And from there, i do midnight to midnight. So I start her off like around midnight and stuff up until, you know, every couple hours doing what I did. And that's was mostly what I did last year too, where... I played the games for a couple of hours and stuff, and you will not believe how quickly midnight to around 6 or 7 a.m. comes because yeah. those hours right there will literally go. They're quiet. They'll go on by. You actually have a lot of energy to start off with. You'll do this and do that. It really starts becoming difficult when it gets to about 6 or 7 o'clock the following, you know, that evening. Yeah. Because uh, I, I did have it to where... The first time that I attempted this, and I think Tyler can attend, attest to this, I was playing Spider-Man while you guys were all talking and stuff like that. 
I literally played games up until like about 1230, that extra life and stuff. And I literally felt like I was freaking drunk, dude. Yeah. I, was, I stayed on with you guys as much as I could. Stayed on with you guys. But it was hilarious because it's like I took a picture of myself. And as soon as I woke up the next morning, I saw the picture of myself. I was like, oh, my God, I look fucking drunk. <laughs> yeah. that, that's how you feel. It's like you can't form sentences. You can't, uh, you know, yeah, you can, like, just moving your mouth is a, is a challenge. But, uh, yeah, like, no, I love your schedule. I just, I, my, this year's going to be different because I'm, uh, I'm starting a new job that week. So I don't know what time I'm going to be off. So shit. I could be off as late as nine o'clock at night. So I mean, I'm not going to be able to, I'm, my plan is basically just get off work. Uh, if I end up working that late, I'm just going to, as soon as I get off work, come home, eat a quick dinner and go to bed. And then I'm going to, yep. cause that was kind of what I was thinking going into this year. I was like, maybe I'll just do the cables system, but maybe not midnight, but like, you know, two or three o'clock or something like that. And, and, and right. the, in the morning, you know, something like that, or like, you know, usually on my, on my, nights off if i don't have to get up early or anything like that that's about usually when i stay up late anymore anyways so um yeah so trying to find that and if you can't do it you know if, if you're if you're not feeling it or if you're just not able to do it because you got life things going on that's totally fine like most people actually don't do uh the whole 24 hours on you know in a row like or even on extra life there's some people that do it like the week after or whatever do, do it before or some people just do 12 and 12 or they break it up over the course of the week there's no shame in that. There's nothing wrong with that. It's just, I think we like doing it because knock it out one one day. Oh and yeah. For the most part, that's kind of when the yeah, you kind of the most uh, buzz is going on about it, and then also like that's when a good chunk of our friends are playing it too. So it's just kind of, it's fun. It's it, it's fun to just be in, in the group along with them. So yeah, uh, it's crazy because this year like usually like it, it feels like a slog going into it, and this year it's just like I I was looking on my calendar here and I'm like. Oh man, like we're almost in November and then like, wow. And actually this is the first time in a long time, like four or five years where this isn't going to be on daylight savings time. No. So that's a big help. I didn't realize until actually a couple of days ago, someone said something to me about, about next Saturday is, uh, um, actually daylight savings time, which is awesome. Wow. Cause that is, I mean, for a, a little while there, like they tried doing, they did a thing where, oh, well, you're going to do 25 hours. Well, you didn't have to, but they said you could do 25 hours because it's the same time. And there's a few years there where I, you know, I did it. Uh, there's a couple of years where, like, I, I just did the 24, and I'm like, um, if I get the 25, I get 25. I just get 24. That's the goal. And I got 24, and I'm like, I am done. <laughs> I can't do the extra <laughs> hour. Because every, every 15 minutes, man, feels like an hour, uh, the last probably quarter of the way there. Um, but, yeah, yeah. Um, so yeah, the, this year we're not we're not having that because I mean I'm I gotta tell you, that is the most demoralizing thing. Even when you know it's coming, and you're looking at the clock, and it's I think like I think at two it goes back to one. So it's like you're looking at the clock, and it goes from one fifty nine to one, and you're just like, oh god, <laughs> because like, you know in your mind you have a time you're going to. It's like all right, I'm going to seven, or I'm going to eight, and you're like all right, cool, five more hours. Six more hours. Okay. <laughs> it's like, you know, it's like, it, it doesn't seem like much, but man, it's, it is, uh, it's something. It's, uh, it's, it, it's a kick in the nuts, uh, for sure. Um, uh, for that. So I'm, I'm, I'm happy. This is the first time in a long time we're not having that. Um, yeah. So, like, I mean, yeah, some of the, we've had some of our best and funniest moments, I think, uh, doing that, especially like having the yeah. ringer, just like I said, that having that ringer, like Wes jumping in, talking about Canadian folklore with us, Justin coming in, playing, <laughs> Friday the 13th with us, you know, or just a bunch of random dudes jumping in and playing with Rocket League with us till three, four oh, in the morning. Shit. Um, that that's, you know, those are the, those are the, those are the, some of my fondest memories of extra life. And, uh, so like, you know, have a plan too. Like I said, you know, make, there's definitely, you always want to, if you can like, if you have a, a, you know, a game of mine that you were waiting on or a game that like, you, you know, you can, can take a good chunk of your time. Like I always have had, you know, black, Assassin's Creed black flag or Odyssey, Evil Within, uh, Recore, things like that. If there's something you can... Luigi's Mansion last year for me, Luigi's Mansion 3, um, you know, that was... that. that I think that game pretty much took over my... Uh, my it was sucks. I went in that year. I was like, Anthem's my game for extra life. And I played two hours of it. And I'm like, this game's terrible. <laughs> <laughs> and I was like, oh, well, what am I going to do for extra life? And the Luigi's Mansion came out, I think, like two or three days before that. And it was perfect. Yep. Um, so, yeah, like have a plan. You know, like this year, like uh, us... Like this is the perfect year for I think for both of us to do Resident Evil Six because 
Uh, we don't. There's not like anything really we're, like fiending over to play. Yeah. Um, and, you know, and it's just, you know get that monkey off our back, and then uh, you know then the rest of the uh, way we'll figure it we'll figure it out from there. So, uh, yeah, that is our uh, you know extra life tips and tricks. Um, yeah. Once again, though, extra dash life dot org. Go there, check it out. Uh, tell your friends. It's tell your family. It's it's a, it's an amazing charity, uh, and uh, I can't wait. It's 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 really is like Christmas, like day though. Like, you look forward to it. And then, like, I mean, it's, it's you know, it's just, like, opening, it's, like, opening up the presents as a kid. It's so exciting. Like, extra life the whole day going into it. And then, like, you know, you're, it's, in a weird way, you're like, you're, but you're, like, you're happy when it's over. But then you wake up and you're kind of sad it's over kind of thing. It's, like, oh, it's, like, when all the presents, you, you, you realize you have no more presents open. It's, like, oh, like, that little sad feeling you get as a kid. It's, like, ah, oh, no more toys. You know, even though I have all these awesome <laughs> toys in front of you, it's, like, oh, man, no more toys. It's that same feeling, you know, once it's over or once you get to the end. So, uh. Yeah, but uh, Gables, I guess I guess more good news for you. Oh yeah, what's that? I uh, I, I brought upon you, um, feel like I do by Vin Diesel earlier this month. Okay. Um, it was a life changing event when we got to listen to Vin Diesel sing. Um, you realize, Gable, you're just four days away from Vin Diesel's next hot single. Oh days, no. Days are gone. Uh, I cannot wait. He uh, tweeted out a few days ago, uh, six days ago to be exact. That uh, you know, he, you guys know how much work I put into my movies, which that's not true, Gables, or that's not true, it's not true at all. <laughs> we, we don't know. You've been the same character since Fast and Furious one. But anyways, oh, uh, I I love you and I love Fast and Furious. It's one of my all time favorite movie franchises. But uh, he's like, uh, we're working on song number two. It's coming out on I believe on Thursday. So uh, expect our review. We're gonna go deep into the review of uh, Days Are Gone on uh, next week's podcast. So it should be fun. I'm excited. Maybe this yeah. will be the second podcast where people are just going to listen. We'll just listen to it on repeat for like 40 minutes and <laughs> just, it'll just be us bobbing our head. We'll do like our first on camera podcast. It's just us listening to days are gone. Oh. <laughs> Don't act like you're sad cables. You're excited. You're looking forward to it. Or we can listen. If you want to, we can listen to him doing the church choir. Oh, happy day. <laughs> uh, but uh, yeah, well, no, we'll, we'll figure it out from there. But, um, yeah. Anyways, uh, we're about half half an hour in. We have a plethora of topics. Not a lot of big stuff this week, but a lot of uh, smaller news. Um, but a plethora uh, like no other. So first up here, Gables. I don't know if you're about this. So uh, NBA 2K. They've added unskippable advertisings um, during the loading screens. So um, during this, uh, there's like an ad for the Oculus um, that goes on uh, for NBA 2K TV. There, um, I think there's a couple other ones, but that's the primary one that they have. Um, so this is a big deal because obviously this is a $60 game. This is going to be a $70 game uh, on the. This was the first game to actually go 70 bucks on uh, uh, on the next gen consoles. But also, um, this is a big deal because one of the, one of the things you can do uh, during the loading screen going into games is you could uh, like edit your lineup going into them, and now you can't edit your lineup. You have to watch uh, advertisements. And these are like full like thirty second advertisements. These aren't like, like you know, like ones that just gloss over. This is the Snickers halftime show, or this is blah blah blah. The, like this is an actual commercial going on um, uh, during the fucking uh, uh, game. Like during the during, this is your loading screen from now on. Um, so a lot of people have been, are pretty pissed off about it. Um, this is something actually that happened earlier this year with um, uh, EA tried adding. Uh, um, uh, like it wasn't even it's was like a splash thing. It was like the the boys. Uh this this uh replay is sponsored by the boys. And it was like a five second thing, not even. And people blew up about it earlier, I think earlier this year. So they they quickly got rid of it and um like that was the end of it. And it's like now they're doing this. It's like ah, fucking way to go, 2K. You guys are somehow making EA look like the good guys. Not only like mad everybody's getting mad in FIFA for free for as a free upgrade. To if you've already bought the the current gen console version of them on the next gen console, you guys are charging a premium. If you want the PS5 version or the, the Xbox Series X version, you guys have to pay a hundred dollars instead of the sixty dollars to get the up the the upgrade. Um, unless you want to pay seventy dollars later on to get the upgrade. So um, I don't know. I just I hate the. Uh, what do you think, Gables? Before I, I go on to, uh, about it, I'll say this purely bluntly. This is bullshit, and I'll yeah. tell you why. They did something similar with last year's rendition of NBA 2K, 
they put commercials after launch inside of the game. They actually went through, had it added in. And let me tell you something. Even last year, people were not happy about it. This year, it's the same old shit. Now, this comes off the heels of them improving a lot of the uh, the shot mechanics because there were some issues that they changed the whole shot mechanics stuff for this NBA 2K game coming out for this year. But uh, on top of that, now they have to deal with these monetized commercials advertised in the middle of their fucking halftime things. I mean, here's the thing. You spend money for games for a reason, and it's not to go forth and be told, oh, hey, look at this advertisement right here. We're going to sell you some more stuff by doing this and this and that. Games back, even as far back as, say, like 15, 20 years ago, even as far back as, say, like the N64 and, like... Uh, Hell, even older than that, now that I think about it. There was games on the NES that would go through and had subtle advertisements, that, but they wouldn't do like full-on commercials. Normally, yeah. they were like product placements. Case in point, Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles 2 on the NES actually had a little poster thing that actually said Pizza Hut on it. And yeah. that was way back around inside the late 80s, early 90s. I am okay if you have a product placement inside of your game. However, when you have to force the player in order to sit through a damn 30-second commercial or any type of commercial in regards to anything, especially if it's like for another product or something politically motivated or something like that, I don't like that. You pay $70 to enjoy your game, not to be sucked out of the experience or something like that because you want to force this monetization stuff on top of what you have already tried to present to us. They are already, like gaming companies in general, they are already trying to get as much money, much attention from the consumer as possible. It's like, you know, hell, like say with the microtransactions, the DLCs, and everything else like that. But this is a bit different when it comes down to it because it's like we get enough commercials going through when we're watching things, say like on YouTube or watching on TV. I understand monetization stuff is important in order to get a lot of the revenue stuff. But not what I spent fucking 60 or $70 playing your goddamn game. I want to play it. I want to enjoy it. I don't want to have to think or do a lot of this other shit. Yeah. I just want to enjoy my game. Yeah. And, it, I, you know, that's kind of where I feel, too, where it's like, you know, like, Burnout, Paradise. Remember, that was a big... I think that was, like, one of the first games that really had it. And, like, um, like you know, to, like, the extent it did where... There was billboards all throughout the town that had real life advertisements for it, and people were like upset about it. And I'm just like, I don't know why, because like, you know, for years we, we for the most part we've been playing games where they had fake, uh, you know, advertisements for like fake companies for fake cars or, uh, yeah. you, you know, you're playing a race again and fake tires, fake whatever, or you play uh, a football game and they have like these comp like, you know, just fake company names. It's just like. That actually adds for especially games like like sports games or racing games. We're trying to add as make it as realistic as possible. Um, it makes sense to have those advertisements, and it's like they're not in the way. They're just you know they're a part of the game. And it's just like when I play Madden, it's just like the Snickers halftime show has been there for a decade, and like that doesn't bother me because it literally has no effect on the game. It's just like we're going to the Snickers halftime show, something they've been doing before they had Snickers. Like we're going to the halftime show. It's like now they just added Snickers halftime show. And all right, you play the game. There's all over, all splash all across the board, or splash up on the on on the mega screen is a, is an advertising for something. It's like I have zero qualms about that because that doesn't affect the gameplay whatsoever. It just this one irks me more because it's just like this is something I bitched about when they announced the if you want the you know like I said the the PS if you want to buy it on PS4 and Xbox One now it's sixty bucks, but if you want that upgrade later to the next console you have to buy the hundred dollar edition. Or you could pay seventy dollars for the, the the next gen just edition. Uh, and it's like they were the first ones to go there. They're, they're charging the most for their game, and it's like some people paid up to hundred dollars for this. And then on top of that, the two K has been like I used to love the NBA two K games up like early in the generation, even in the middle of the generation. But it's like somewhere th towards the end where like they went so heavy on like making you pretty much buy uh, microtransactions. Like they're the probably the worst ones about it of anybody in, in gaming, especially even a few years ago when we had the big issue of Battlefront 2 and, uh, you know, how, how Overwatch handles it and how these games handle microtransactions. It's like everybody else kind of took a step back and we've seen a big change in the way things go and a lot of games 
they changed the way they do microtransactions or completely got rid of them or they just don't have them. Um, you know, that's a big point. Like, you know, Activision points out with their games, like they have to, it's like Tony Hawk or Crash Bandicoot. There's no microtransactions or uh, Star Wars Battlefront. There's no microtransactions. They can point to tell you that. Um, or like the fact that like there's no DLC anymore for the Battlefield games, things like that. Like they're, they're like, they've totally changed the direction how they handle things. And it's like the 2K games, like they've, haven't changed at all if not they've gotten worse it's just like when you're already charging the biggest premium for your game probably out of anybody out there for you know for paid games like it, it's just it's disgusting it's just like it, you know it's, it's fucked up because it's but it's like they know like they're like their microtransactions have gotten worse where they actually charge real money for your fake character to get like haircuts and shit like that you know it's like it's it, they've gotten worse over the years and it's just disgusting to see like that they do it, but they just know people are going to buy them. So they just keep fucking doing it. And it's just it sucks. Like I haven't paid real money for like, I, I play them usually every, almost every year we get, we get it for free on, on Xbox or PlayStation on the game on games with gold or PS plus. And I'll play it for a little bit. And like, Cause I enjoy the basketball game. They make a good game, but it's just like, it's so riddled with Michael transactions where it's just like, I don't like, I don't want to play this game. <laughs> it's like, I, you guys suck the fun out of this uh, with throwing this shit in my face. So it's, yeah, it's just, I don't know. It's just a bummer. Like you guys make such a, like, I feel bad for the, the developers there it was like, you guys make a really good uh, quality game every year. And it's just the people that run your company, fuck it up for everybody. But moving on Gables, this one I think is pretty exciting for you. Um, the original fire emblem from 1990, uh, fire emblem, shadow dragon, and Bl- the blade of light is, uh, was, came out in Japan in 1990. Uh, only and has um, I outside there's a DS port that came uh, about 15 years ago I want to say uh, but is actually being uh, come is, has been uh, localized and everything for us it is coming on December 4th there's a collector edition you can get I don't know I can't remember which the collector edition was it's gonna be the digital edition is gonna be six dollars um, but uh, the uh, it comes the collector edition comes actually with the NES cart of it which is pretty cool to see um, it's celebrating the 30th anniversary uh, comes with a uh, an actual NES cart uh, with a sleeve. Uh, it has a manually uh, manual translated into English. Uh, it has a Nintendo Power poster. It has a map of the world and a giant art book. Um, oh, it's fifty dollars for the uh, anniversary collection, um, and it's sold out everywhere. I'm just looking at it right now. But you can only get this until March 31st of next year. Um, but Gables, I, I think this is something. I, I you know think this is something you might be looking forward to. Um, what what are your thoughts on this? To be perfectly honest with you. I was definitely impressed and very surprised that Nintendo went this route for Fire Emblem. I understand how Three Houses has made leaps and bounds, probably one of the best-selling Fire Emblem games to date. Even dating back to, say, like, to, let's see, Fire Emblem Awakening, and even, like, uh, the Fire Emblem games, the later ones in the 3DS. I'm talking about, uh, oh gosh, there was the two Fire Emblems. One was Conquest, and the other one was Birthright, if I'm not mistaken. And then there's like a third one that's downloadable only. But uh, what I'm getting at is Fire Emblem in and of itself was first introduced to the U.S. in uh, the inclusion of Martha and Roy in Smash Brothers Melee. And I, I really liked how they started off that trailer because it, they started off in an actual conversation that a lot of people had back in the day to where it's like, like who's Marth? Who's Roy? Where, mm-hmm. What's Fire oh, Emblem? Oh, yeah. Yeah, you know, I mean, I had that conversation with friends growing up. I mean, I'm, <laughs> I'm pretty sure that a lot of the listeners out there who grew up back in the day in high school playing games in the GameCube and playing Smash Melee was like, Marth and Roy. I mean, I don't know who these guys are. They look sort of, uh, I don't even know what the heck the games were at that point. But uh, I think it's really impressive that Nintendo went back to an old classic Famicom game translated it and actually made it available not through their NES app but as a full-on purchase via sort of like a virtual console thing that uh, they used to do the thing about it that uh, I know Nintendo they've done something similar to this before with Earthbound Beginnings and that is the clear thing that I remember purchasing on the Wii U and that was even back then it was initial excitement of hey this is an unreleased game in the sh- in the U.S., you know? And it was part of my list during that year, too, that I released, Earthbound Beginnings. 
this is kind of like the similar thing to where the game has been available in Japan ever since the 80s. Now we're going to be having a chance to play the original Fire Emblem, Shadow Dragon and the Last Blade or some of the sort. I have played Shadow Dragon on the DS before. However, however, I, did, I could not get into it at that time. It was a little bit... It was a little bit more like, uh, it was kind of a less in terms of experience, in terms of features, in terms that kind of interested me. Really, it didn't take until Awakening back around 2013 that I really started to get into the whole aspect of Fire Emblem as a series. So for this old school game to go forth and be released around, I, I think it's actually going to be released in June, like December 2nd? Um, I'm thinking, I'm not sure. But it's going to be releasing fairly soon. Yeah, December 4th. Sorry. Okay, December 4th. I was a couple days off. There's a lot of things I saw in the initial gameplay stuff. Like you were able to go through and bookmark certain chapters. You're able to rewind turns. It's, it is accessorized to where it's in a modern sense. So if you are having trouble playing this game, and a lot of people going into this game, it'll be their first time. I know it'll be the first time for me playing this game. That's going to be a great feature. I can learn, I can pretty much learn the basics of how this game works. It's not going to have, and here's the thing, it's not going to have all of the features that uh, modern Fire Emblem games take advantage of. There's not going to be like, say, branching points and stuff to, uh, you know, create a lot of uh, social link level ups or something of that sort. There's not going to be a whole lot of options in terms of maybe evolving a unit to this or that. But what there is going to be is classic Fire Emblem sort of like strategy RPG gameplay to where, okay, you're going to have swords that are having advantage over, say, swords advantages over lances, lances over axes, and then axes over swords and stuff. So you'll have that weapon triangle that's in effect. You're going to have a story. You're going to have a good story in and of itself. But what I can say in what I can say really much, the significance of this game of an old niche Famicom game translated for modern times that Nintendo just did. It it opens up a realm of possibilities. This is the second time in the past like seven or eight years Nintendo has done this. Who's to say they could not do the same aspect, say, for a Mother 3, for anything that never released outside of Japan, really. I mean, Nintendo has that option to where they have, the ball is pretty much in their court. They're making a lot of cash in terms of their Switch sales. They can go forth and see what franchises are doing well and pick what accordance to what they want to do. So it has me excited, really. This original Fire Emblem release, I'm excited to play this. It's definitely going to be a trip to play another NES game in a modern day. Because <laughs> yeah. that was a lot of the features that... That's a lot of the appeal that I had when Earthbound Beginnings released on the Wii U's virtual console. It's like, it's a modern-day NES game that released around that time point. So that appeal in and of itself is awesome to me. So yeah, I'm very excited about it, man. You know what's crazy, Gables, is there are two NES games that are eligible this year for Game of the Year. <laughs> Mario, okay. we, have, we have Mario Picross and Fire Emblem now. That's very true, because that Mario Pit Cross game for Super Nintendo, that Super Famicom, never released in the U.S. Yeah. So two <laughs> eligible games this year for Game of the Year. Uh, it's like the Star Fox 2 we had a, a few years back, where it's like, I guess that technically is a Game of the Year. Well, Star Fox 2 definitely was a thing, but also Earthbound Beginnings. That was the first thing that really... Uh, yeah, I remember that was... My top uh, 10 in the loop. <laughs> yeah, I think... Uh, yeah, you had it, I think... Justin consider added it like in his honorable mentions that year, so yeah, um, yeah, really cool. Not you know not my bag. I think that's awesome they're doing it. Uh, what, what's your thoughts on the March thirty first thing though? Oh 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 the whole like March fourth thing. Yeah, I think I honestly think that it's a dumb idea to have it be a limited release. Yeah, I mean for God's sakes, it's the original Fire Emblem stuff. I mean you want more people to play this game. It's not going to be like a Mario situation where we're assuming that Nintendo is going to re-release those Mario games digitally or maybe through separately through some other means. This yeah. is a game that if you don't jump on it immediately, it's going to go. Yeah. I have that sneaking suspicion that that's going to be the case. So I don't, I'm don't. i not even going to invest inside of the 
like the special edition of that thing because it's going to be hard to come by people are going to scalp that thing and sell it for like a couple hundred dollars i want to buy the game digitally have it on my switch play it when i want to and enjoy it that way yeah yeah yeah. it's it's baffling that they're still doing this someone had a really good tweet where it's like is nintendo going out of business on april 1st (laughs) it's like (laughs) like, why are they doing this it it doesn't make it it's it's baffling it's just like it's nintendo i always talk about they give you 80% 80% of what you want, then that last 20% is just completely baffling and anger-inducing. Um, but moving on to another Nintendo topic here. Um, not much to say here. Uh, this some happened about a month ago. They announced that the Joy-Cons in Japan were dropping about, it was like around 16, 16.5% here, I found it right there, uh, and starting on November 6th. And they're doing the same thing here in uh, the United States. They're announcing uh, in, in North America. Um I don't know. I don't know if it's right away or not. It doesn't say. Oh yeah, eleven nine. So November 9th. Um, they will be dropping the Joy Cons, the separate ones, and not the bundles. The bundles will stay at eighty, but it's been it's always been fifty dollars to buy the separate Joy Cons. Now they're gonna bring them down both to bring them down to forty dollars a piece. So it's no longer uh, a rip off to buy them separately. So kind of a. I still think the Joy Cons are overly way overpriced um, for what they are, especially the fact that we are three and a half years into this and we're still dealing with the joy con drift um but also where it's like say your joy con goes missing or your joy con uh you know one of them goes out or doesn't work it doesn't work anymore it's like well i have a red and a blue one my red one just died you know it's like i have to pay you know it's, it's kind of stupid to buy a you know a single one then i don't know i just i've always nintendo's the worst at at their accessories they are the king of gouging us for money on accessories and dumb things like the wheel or the, the Wii Fit pad or um, Joy Cons. Like, I have fucking, I think, six of them now at this point. And I, I almost bought the goddamn purple and uh, yellow ones the other day. Uh, wait, do I have? No, I have the. Which, which ones do I have? I have the green and yellow. I have the Mario Party ones. I also have the red and blue and the gray ones. Um, but it's like, I'm so tempted by the, those fucking purple ones because it's just, it's Waluigi and I want them so bad. But I, I don't know. Yeah, so the, they. They're, they're dropping them down. Uh, I think it's needed badly. I still think they should be cheaper. Uh, guys, that's I would I honestly would buy more. I'd be more tempted to buy them because it's not really like for me it hasn't really been so much of an impulse purchase. Like I got the red and blue ones. I got I got them dirt cheap. I think I got them for like fifteen bucks a piece because they had a, a sale on them at GameStop um, for used ones. But uh, I got the when I bought the Mario Party bundle. It came with the 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 green and the yellow. But uh, god damn man, some of those are so sexy. Remember the arms ones when those came out? God damn, I went, fucked them right there in, in GameStop. And I got arms. And if the guy would have let me hold them for two seconds, um, just put up one on each side and just went to town. But anyways, um, sorry. Uh, I don't know. I mean, is doing anything for Gables? Well, how many Joy Cons do you have? I have two. I have my original ones. But I will say that I agree with you in terms of the Joy Cons were overpriced to begin with. Still are. Eighty dollars for those two Joy Cons, way too much money, especially since the quality does not match the price asking. Let that also be known, and let this also be known that this week I actually experienced my first thing of Joy Con drift on one of my Joy Cons. You lucky son of a bitch, okay. Dude, it has took me almost four years since the Switch came out, you know. I got the Switch later on, obviously, like around, I think it was December of no, 2016. No, no, or... no. well, it came out in March 2017. You got yours, like, end of March, early April. Okay, okay. So, yeah, it was around that time. Thank you very much. I forgot yeah. about that. But uh, I've had those same Joy-Cons and stuff all this time. It wasn't this past. It was, like, this past week I turned on my old Switch and stuff, and all of a sudden it's, like, the uh, the highlights of uh when you move like your freaking icons and stuff like that on the switch it started just going like uh kind of going a little bit crazy and stuff back and forth so it wasn't until i powered on a game and stuff where my character was kind of moving alone i'm like oh no here we go (laughs) but uh and in terms of this news i still think the joy cons i think that's i still think it's kind of hilarious that it took them until this point in order to separate the Joy-Cons to be sold individually. Well, they've, they've Even, always... 
They've yeah. always had them separate, but they've always been fifty dollars instead of forty. Right, right. In terms of that, say in Japan. No, just every, I like say? no Japan. They they dropped the price last. They announced the last month that they're dropping the price. But you've always right, been able right. to buy them separately. You just never never been able. They've always been. You you get a bundle for eighty, or you buy them separately for fifty. Okay, okay. I didn't realize that in terms of that. I was more or less seeing it from like a retail standpoint because I've never seen those Joy Cons really sold individually in terms of the main retailers, but in terms of maybe a GameStop, you may see the occasional one controller sold for like like you were just saying, you know, fifty or something along that lines. Yeah. I still think even at forty for that things a piece, it's too much. I wouldn't mind like say getting a joy con me for like about 30 bucks because that's that sweet spot to where if you want to do a bunch of different colors okay spend 30 bucks get this get that you know but uh i think it's a good it's a good move by nintendo to decrease the cost but i think it's also a missed opportunity to go and actually improve the quality of those stupid joy cons because well i personally did not use those joy cons a lot because i had my pro controller that i bought when i got my fucking switch yeah <laughs> and i've used that and it's worked fantastically i don't have no joy con switch my joy con drift on this damn thing yeah i'm just pressing my buttons <laughs> yeah like, well it's like I I, yeah. I I um i had joy con drift like almost immediately but i didn't want to even though you could send it back for free it's like i didn't want to because it took like a month to get them back so it's just like i didn't want to um deal with all that so i just never did and then right Times has gone by and just never got around to it. Now I got I got backups, but I, I experienced that with with mine almost immediately when I was testing them out, and then even with the ones I the newer ones I bought, and like even like the the Mario Party ones, I've experienced uh, Joy Contra with them with my I think it's my green one I, I experienced it with. And then I had the red and blue ones I bought uh, a couple of years ago, um, and I've uh, playing Mario Party with some with some people like I have experienced that as well on one of them. So it's like even like you know the ones that are coming out this year, people are experiencing joy contra with them. It's nuts that we're three and a half years in this console life. We haven't figured that out yet. Um, but um, and yeah, yeah uh, it's because of stuff like that that when I first got a Switch, I invest instead of a Pro controller because I was hearing issues of Joy-Con drift from people getting yeah. launch day switches and having that issue. <laughs> yeah, like I mean, it's been it's been nice for me. Yeah, where like I I played ninety five percent of the time. 99% probably with my uh, um, pro controller. Like I don't, or I played it in handheld mode where it doesn't affect it. But like, yeah, like there are certain games, like there's that weird sn- snip, snipper clips. I played yeah. a little bit of uh, that you have to use joy cons with and like Mario party. You have to, and it's just like, it's frustrating, especially when you're playing with people and it's like the game's already frustrating enough as it is, but then you get a joy con drift and you're trying to explain to children and then somebody that doesn't know how to play video games. I'm dealing with the short country trying to explain it to them and they just say, Oh, you're just complaining. It's like, no, this is a real thing. that's happening. But, um, it's funny though, when they get that controller though, and they don't realize it and you're like, Oh, that sucks. But, uh, anyways, <laughs> uh, moving on to some non Nintendo topics here. We have, we have a couple, we have a few, um, Xbox topics, topics here to talk about. So, uh, Phil Spencer had a, uh, did an interview the uh, other day, uh, with, uh, strash. I don't have an idea. S T R A T E C H E R Y. Anyways, did an interview with them talking about uh, just kind of like the, the kind of the future of Xbox and things like that. Pl- plans going into twenty twenty one about X Cloud. Um, something is they you know they kind of talk about the fact that you will um, uh, you know X Cloud's now a thing that's going on in Game Pass. But something he talked about was the potential of a uh, a streaming stick and also adding a different tier. To the Game Pass series, so like uh, I got a few comments here from him. So uh, one topic here is I think we're, you're going to see lower price hardware as part of our ecosystem when you think about streaming sticks and other things that somebody might want uh, to just plug into their TV and go play via X Cloud. Um, you could imagine us even having something that we could just include in the Game Pass subscription that gave you the ability to stream X Cloud games to your television and buy in the controller. Um, and especially also tease the potential of uh, Xbox Game Pass Platinum. Um, so this, you know, this, this, you know, we, we, a couple last E3, they announced the, the game pass ultimate where it came with Xbox live, uh, bundled in with a uh, game pass. And then there's the game, there's a regular game pass here. And then earlier this year, they announced that X cloud is coming to the game pass ultimate 
for everybody. Uh, something so I have I need to try that out because I have Game Pass Ultimate. I want to try it out. Um, but uh, anyways, they announced that that's out now. It's fifteen dollars a month for the Ultimate. I think it's ten dollars a month for the uh, just the regular Game Pass tier. So um, you know, this is something we see a lot where it seems pretty much everybody has every streaming service has tiers now where it's like Netflix. I think the cheapest tier is like ten bucks. And then, like, I have the most expensive one. I think it's, like, 17 but that's because that's how you get the 4K and HDR. Um, you know, when, like, we, you know, like, it also means you can stream on more than uh, more devices at a time as well. Um, but, you know, this is, we're, we're kind of, we're getting more and more closer to, like, we have Amazon Luna now. Google Stadia uh, has been out for a, about a year now. That, you know, obviously, it's not going well, but it's, it's been out. Uh, the xCloud just kind of, is, is just now kind of coming out, and we're not really... Uh, we're kind of waiting to see how that goes, but I mean, what's your thoughts, Gables, on the potential of adding a new tier to Game Pass, and also the idea of having a, an Xbox streaming stick for uh, the X Cloud? I feel it makes sense for Microsoft. They want to introduce more people into their ecosystem as much as possible, and by going the way of, say, like a Fire Stick TV sort of route, by having the stick available for purchase via retailer or whatsoever, having your own controller bundled with it, or who knows what, and having like a subscription service like with Game Pass and this and that, I could see that working for people who are want to play some video games, but they're not going to go and invest instead of like a $500 system or something like say for Series X or like a Series S. But I would think that, yeah, it's, it's not going to be ideal. Basically what Microsoft's trying to do, obviously, it's like they're, they want – more people go in their ecosystem they want multiple different options and so i could see this doing potentially well for microsoft in the long run because not only they have more people going through and play their games via x cloud but uh it's going to be browser based the thing is going to be browser based to bypass what their initial beef with apple was where they wanted an app like on the freaking like uh, apple store but obviously Apple went through an exit idea, so this is one of their ways that they're trying to go forth and have things initially presentable. But uh, yeah, I could, I think it's actually a pretty decent idea. I really like that idea where they have something casual, something that's uh, gonna be for like the working man that probably can't afford, like I said before, in the Series X, and then just do its things that way. Yeah. Um... Yeah, I love this idea. I, I'm all aboard the the streaming stick. Um, I would gladly, even if it's a hundred bucks, I'm all aboard. Um, and obviously, like it wouldn't run or look as good um, playing on a Series X or an X, probably. Maybe maybe it's good as Series S. I don't know. But um, you, you know, you're not gonna get, it's not going to obviously because it's being streamed. It's not downloaded to a hard drive. Um, but I look at it right now, where like where I am with gaming, where it's just like we talk about it. This isn't like we are. We go where the games go, but right now, you know, over the course of this podcast and this generation, it's been mostly Nintendo uh, and uh, uh, PlayStation, where the games, have, the great games, have been exclusively. Um, so, you know, some people like, like us that are like we have Xboxes. I have, I have a Series X. You are Series X. I have a One X, and you have a uh, you have a One S, don't you? Yes, I do. Yeah, so it's like people that, like us, like we're, we like I, I definitely like I, I'm looking forward to the next set of games where it's like if. You know, and I love Game Pass. I like jumping into it here and there. We both play Battletoads um, and Street, yeah. Street Rage 4 out of it. So there's definitely great games on there. There's, there's plenty of games, like, we'll look at that I want to jump into at some point in there as well. But, like, you know, that'd be, that'd be perfect. Instead of spending, you know, another 500 bucks on a console, if I could just spend 100 and then, like, I'm already, like, if I have a five, you know, I have an Xbox console, I'm probably already going to have this service anyways. Like, why not for 50 even if it's like a platinum tier i don't know it's 20 bucks i don't know or 50 it just stays at 15 like you have to have the 15 dollar tier to use it like that's totally fine uh, especially you know like if there's you know like I, if it's something i jump into periodically i'll just wait till you know I, I don't have to have it all the time i could just get it for a month here or there like this is perfect this is like you know i don't need to like cause remember when i bought the the one x a few years ago it's like i was playing games on it and buying games on it just because I feel like I had to play games on it, you know, because um, it's this, this to justify my purchase. It's like hundred dollars is a lot easier to swallow to justify your purchase, you know. Even at that, if you play a few games on there a year, it's totally worth it. Um, and I, I, you know, I think you know, especially and we've talked about it for a long time where like 
they have been the kings of you know doing the best for the fans and doing all these great services and it's just like the biggest issue they have the one thing they can't seem to solve right now and hopefully in a few years they do it is the games but it's like i don't know i i, I hope this is true because i mean this is something they talked about like people like a lot of people uh, like a lot of third-party developers have felt is like they feel like this might be the last real generation uh, going into ps5 and series x um, and then after that it's just gonna be streaming services but they're also i don't know if i believe that necessarily because a lot of developers thought that console gaming was dead going into ps4 and xbox and that's why the first couple of years of the new consoles there wasn't a lot of new games coming out because everybody thought pc gaming was the future um and obviously i mean pc gaming is doing great but i mean this is probably one of the best generations we've had for all all for everybody combined where all three consoles are doing extremely well right now um or i shouldn't say extremely well, but doing really really well right now um and we're going to a very fun generation so yeah um i i'm all aboard i hope this is true um you know for I, you know i think this would be great for a lot of people too and this would be great for them because like they're probably you know they, you you might get instead of getting you know you might get 50 60 70 million people to, to buy a xbox series x or s but you could probably get a couple hundred million people to buy a, a streaming stick and then also pay an additional 15 dollars a month for your your game pass service on top of that so i'm on board and I, you know this is and my biggest thing we've been bashing stadia especially me on this podcast for the last year because you always we, we talk about is like the games are more expensive on there a lot of the games that are on there are old anyways and, and like the server the games that you pay a, a monthly fee for to play on there are not really top tier games when you look at like you can go if you get a streaming service like you've been something that's been in the ecosystem for a while the uh, you there's a decent backlog of games that you you've, you own on there already and then game pass the games that are available on game pass are way better uh than and uh, you know you're talking way way better you're talking about 20 plus years of games on there just talking about xbox catalog but on top of that third-party stuff on there than anything that stadia and maybe even luna will have on there so uh yeah i look forward to that but uh moving on to the next topic here this one also is uh, xbox related so I meant to show you the trailer for this Gables because this kind of like this kind of just came out and it just I haven't only really seen a lot of people talking about it. It's really weird. Um, so uh, they announced that there's going to be a Gears Five Story DLC uh, coming in December um, for people. No, I can't. What was it? I, I saw the title. I think there's a title for it, but I don't remember. But this is actually going to be DLC for the story. This isn't going to just be uh, um, st- like this isn't going to be uh, you know like more just uh t- uh multiplayer sorry multiplayer dlc or co-op dlc it's gonna be called high busters is the title um imagine i'll hear more from it soon um but uh another thing on top of that is they announced that dave batista yes the the the, the retired professional wrestler and turned actor from uh james bond movies and most famously guardians of the galaxy uh he is if you you can go once the uh uh, there's gonna be an update next month for it that you can play through um, the Gears Five campaign and replace the Marcus Phoenix actor with Dave Batista's model and voice acting. <laughs> there's a trailer out there for it, Gables. You need to see it. Uh, it is jarring, but they do like a side by side and show you the differences and stuff like that. Um, but I, I thought it was kind of fascinating that they're doing this. Uh, I love the fact though it's optional. That at first when I read it, like people were like, um, there, there seemed to be like like there's some like misleading headlines out there where it's like uh, they were they were replacing the actor with Dave Batista. Um, but it's it's an option. You don't have to do that. But uh, I don't know. I mean, I, you, did you play Gears Five last year? I can't remember. No, I didn't. I have it. I own it. I got it this year. Oh, my game of the year last year. It's so good. It's good. good. It's got a good game. But, um, yeah, um, I don't know. I kind of like, I'm actually, I'm, I love, like I said, my game of the year last year, I'm looking forward to, you know, gears is turned into one of my favorite franchises of my lifetime quietly. Didn't even realize it until a few years ago. Um, but I, I love gears five. It's a game of the year last year. Um, all aboard having a new DLC pack for it and coming out of nowhere, no price or date yet. Just, we you know, it just said December, but, um, yeah, I kind of I I I'm tempted to like go back and play a little bit of Gears Five after the update comes out and just kind of see like I feel like I I you know we're we're both wrestling fans or uh, 
used to be big time wrestling fans at least. Uh, but I love Batista. Uh, and he Batista's also been like a big a big proponent of like if they make a Gears movie, he wants to play Marcus Phoenix role. So this is kind of exciting in that sense where like he's been a proponent, like he's an actual fan of these games. Um, so yeah, I'm I'm looking forward to that. But uh, yeah, I'll, I'll have to send you the trailer later, Gables, because it, it's pretty funny to watch it. Not funny, but it's it's interesting. Uh, <laughs> but uh, last but not least, Gables, um, Smash Brothers, man, they took Steve's meat. Hmm? You didn't hear about this? No. You have? Do you know about the 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 winning stage for uh, Smash Brothers for Steve? Oh, what's his winning? What's his winning thing? Okay, oh okay, okay. All right, this is not gonna be great audio here, but um, all right, I'm gonna do a share screen. I'll fix this and. All right. Okay, we're gonna have to. Do so it. they made adjustments on his windscreen, pretty much. Yes. So. All right, I'm sharing the screen now. <laughs> <laughs> you haven't seen. Okay, here, here's a video. No, I didn't. But now that I have, I cannot unsee that. Okay, so. Here he wins. All right. Boom. We're going to the win. So he's eating the meat. And then bam. <laughs> <laughs> you've never How have you not seen this? Dude. Dude, the reason why I have it is because I haven't actually played anything of Steve. <laughs> well, I haven't, I haven't played, played it either. I just, it's been all. It's been like the most talked about thing on the internet the last like two weeks. Well, to be perfectly honest with you, I haven't seen it. It's because for mostly I have been on YouTube just watching stuff. I haven't really been on a lot of social media stuff. But now that I've seen it, I thought, oh, that's fucking crazy. And I <laughs> I love it. I love yeah. it. And then Nintendo actually went through and changed it. That's even Yeah, more so it's been a big thing. They uh, they uh, they changed it. Uh, they did an, uh, an update and they changed it. So it doesn't happen anymore. Um, but uh, yeah, so... <laughs> Uh, oh, wow! I can't, I can't believe you've never seen that game. That's fucking hilarious. Uh, <laughs> yeah, but they, uh, they took, St- they took S- Steve's meat, and I'm, I'm not happy about it. You know, like no one should. You know, he's a hungry man. He's a, he's a growing boy, uh, and nobody should um, lose their meat like that. Um, it's just, I, I can't believe that no one ever thought that something's wrong there. It's like the, the people. I, I, is Sakurai so pure of heart that he doesn't see it? Like, I don't know. I just like you. You saw the, you just saw the screenshot and you immediately knew what was happening. <laughs> and then you saw the video and you're like, this is made. This is even worse. Like, cause I, I heard. I saw the screenshot immediately when it, when that first came out, and I'm like, that's a penis. And then I saw the uh, the video of him, like the winning, like him winning, and he eats the meat, and I'm like. That had to be on purpose, right? You, you guys did that on purpose, didn't you? There's no way that was accident. <laughs> I think the cutoff and stuff like that was... They didn't think about the cutoff, and so that's why it looked like what it did. Yeah. <laughs> that's great. I This is funny. This is hilarious to me. Uh, you, uh... Never, oh, man. I'm glad I could break this to you. Um, this makes me very happy, showing you that <laughs> Having this moment, sharing that moment with you, it's it's up there with the time I, I showed you in the long long ago, um, the Vin Diesel uh, oh. scene. <laughs> uh, I can't I can't wait um, I can't wait to relive that moment next week. Uh, but yeah, I don't know. It's just I kind of wish I always left it in. It's almost like, man, you get like one like you guys didn't recognize it, but also it's like just just let it be, man. It's out there now. Just you know, in the age of the internet, it's just it's just there, you know. You can't go back now. You know, it's like you like you, you put it you know, you, you raise a bunch of money for kids for charity and then you release a bunch of news of gables. Um they're just out there now. No. There's no taking them back. <laughs> gables is broken, he still can't. <laughs> uh. I mean I, I mean what's what, what's your thoughts on, on uh Steve's meat? I'm all bored. <laughs> that, that's a very impressive meat. Well it definitely looks like a juicy meat. Yeah, it's very juicy. Does it look like you've been pounding a bit? Yep, it's raw. It, I, I want Gordon Ramsay's impression on Steve's meat. It's raw. I've eaten this. It's rotten. You know, I, I just I, I want to I want to see that. I want to be there for that. I want him to play Smash and then see his impression after that of uh, that oh meat. God. It's like bloody hell. Um, but uh, I don't know. I just want to see Gordon Ramsay rank Steve's meat. But um, like I mean, we're never gonna have them now because they patched it out. 
But uh, Gables, we are now into the uh, end game here of uh, what we've been playing. Like I said earlier, I haven't really played much. I tried jump back into Avengers. I I just can't. I love I like the game. I hate I hate hate the uh, the uh, at the games and service part of it. It's just the loading is terrible. Um, I just I can't get past it. And then just the constant break of the game. Like the game is fine. It's it's a I think the problem is like Destiny, like the Destiny one and two, like the gameplay is actually really, really good. It's great gameplay, and like the missions are pretty long. You can be stuck in there for hours, and for the most part, when you go into you know into these, you're just doing, you're on a you're on a line to do. There's like some side stuff to do, but for the most part, 99% of it is you're on just a straight shot of doing these uh, um, these missions, and so it's just like this seems unnecessary to have this. Like this should just be, like I said last week. Should have just been a linear uh, game. Maybe you have like a two-player co-op at most, and that's it. Um, but uh, yeah, I just I I can't get past it. And then uh, play a little more Saints Row the Third, but that's about it. What about you, Gables? Well, to continue on from last week, I did play a little bit more on the PlayStation Now service. I wanted to test out Infamous on it, so I went. I tried to play a little bit of Infamous. There was some stuttering. <laughs> There was actually some noticeable stuttering and like a little bit of input delay stuff. Plus the game in and of itself. I know it's streaming a game that uh, has 1080p, this and that, but it did not look good when I tried to stream it stream it through that whole Gaikai stuff. So I initially played through like the, maybe the first couple missions and stuff. It's still setting on my PS4, but uh, I'm not really tempted to return back to it only because I did encounter a bit of issues. I know last week I had said things in regards to like the whole playing some of the fighting game stuff on the thing, especially like uh, Darkstalkers Resurrection and like Street Fighter 3 Online Edition. Yeah, the input delays and stuff and also like the stuttering in terms of the streaming, the sudden slowdowns in some parts, it's not consistent enough for me to even remotely try playing PS3 games and that stuff. Mirror's Edge, it was all right, I didn't notice a lot of any type of like uh, noticeable delays, but yeah, it kind of broke it down to me where it's like I would not want to play PS3 games streaming through the PS4 stuff currently. And saying that, I actually invested inside of the PS3 this week. <laughs> fan house, fan house. That's hilarious. So it's like. Back in the back of my head, you know, it's like uh, I was deciding, okay, should I invest inside of a PS3 or should I try PlayStation Now? At first, I thought, you know what, let's spend the $60, let's get a whole year. And then I doubled down and I thought about it. It's like, oh, wait, if I do that and I don't like it, I'm going to be out 60 bucks, and, like, uh, yeah. I'm not going to barely use it. And so I decided to get the one month for $10, try it out, see if I liked it. I did that, knowing full well and stuff. Hey, there's PS3 games available on the service. I'll try some of them out. Did that. Absolutely do not like how they did the PS3 stuff. So, I finally acquired a PlayStation 3 console. Yes, I was able to get it for dirt cheap. I plugged in my DualShock 4 because it did not come with the controller. It just basically came with the plug and the console itself. And let me tell you something. On the console itself, the person who owned it last had 21 digital games downloaded on that damn thing. Hmm. And uh, there were some that I already had owned, but there was a couple I didn't. You had Dark Souls 2 digitally on that damn thing. You had the Castle Crashers, like the PS3 version of it. You had like, uh, well, there were some other games on it that uh, I'm not remembering right off the top of my head. But I did delete some of the ones that I already owned through PSN. So once I went through all that, I went through my network stuff and I downloaded a couple of different games because I know full well they've been pulled off the network. And I I wanted to go through and see if I can actually play them. The first one was Street Fighter 3 Online Edition. I was able to download my game. I was able to do the unlock stuff. And I was able to actually play the game. I thought that was awesome. So I did the same thing for Scott Pilgrim vs. The World. That game is coming out, finally, re-released, like, on the next generation, on these, like, current systems, pardon me. 
Before then, you could have only played it on the Xbox 360 or the PlayStation 3. I have the PS3 version. I paid good money to experience that. I actually had the DLC for it, too. So to go back and download that, I was able to get the game to turn on, right? I was able to boot it up. The game is not supported by the DualShock 4. Oh. <laughs> I cannot play the game because the controller will not work with it. Because the PS4, when you plug it into, like, the DualShock 4, when you plug it via USB into the PS3, it acts like a dummy controller. You need an actual PS3 controller in order to fully play games like Scott Pilgrim vs. The World, or even to exit out of the screen and close the game. I literally have to turn my PS3 on and off in order to reset and to go forth and do whatever. So, yes, cumbersome, but at the in the long run, I feel like I have definitely done something good in the right direction. The next game I tried out was a game I could not even get downloaded the first time around when I had rebought a PS3. And that's Marvel vs. Capcom 2. Marvel. Back then, towards the end of the PS3, Xbox 360 generation, they had pulled their fighting games. The original Marvel vs. Capcom and Marvel vs. Capcom 2, and even some bit of like uh, Marvel 3. They pulled it off because of licensing issues. I'm happy to report I was able to download that game. I was able to get the stuff unlocked. And I can play Marvel vs. Capcom 2 on my PS3. And not only that, I played Marvel vs. Capcom 2 online today. I played through a friendly match with uh, someone else, obviously, at a higher skill range than I did. Because guess what? There are people still playing Marvel vs. Capcom 2 online the PlayStation Network. And they have been playing this game all this time. There are people that are on that scoreboard which have over 4,000 wins on this goddamn thing. We're talking about people that are not only skilled at the game, but are top-level players that have that the only way they can go through and play this game to keep up their skills is to play the PlayStation version, the PS3 version. I was so happy the first time, Tyler, in around eight years, I'm able to play the PlayStation 3 online, and it's with this game that I yes. played a lot of back around 2009, 2010. I will say, though, I definitely need to brush up some skills because I did not play too well. I was able to get some shots in with the one match that I did have. A friendly match, mind you, not a ranked one. Well, I definitely could do a lot better. I need to brush up some little bit of things. Maybe I can get something on the ground and uh, definitely plug it, my console in via LAN, like my phone that phone jack, LAN cable, whatever, and maybe I'll not have so much of a wireless connection while I'm going through and playing a fighting game because <laughs> those things matter. But... Uh, yeah, man, I tell you what, I am so excited just to have the PlayStation 3 system again. And on top of that, went to GameStop, was trying to find a DualShock 3 controller, could not, but I ended up buying another Vita. <laughs> that in and of itself was the whole, okay, I'm going to go in here, see if I can find this and that, and all of a sudden leading with something incredibly like the opposite and like being expensive. So yeah, I'm happy to report I found a Model 2000 PlayStation Vita, around 170 bucks. Yes, it works. There's no type of issues that I'm able to find right now. The screen is in great shape. The buttons and the thumbsticks are in good shape. I was able to find an old screen save, like a screen protector from uh, some of the backups that I had from my original Vita. Those fit like a glove. I'm trying to find a case for one for uh, my Vita now. But... I also got two games with it. Got Rayman Origins, got Sly Cooper, like Thieves in Time. Those two games I used to have physically. I now have them back physically. So, you may ask yourself, Gables, why are you investing inside the PlayStation 3 and the PlayStation Vita 
now of all times, especially with the launch of the PS5 next month and the Xbox Series X following suit. And my answer to you is because of the news that went along the past couple weeks in terms of Sony not allowing the option for you to, they not, not, you know, no longer allowing the option to buy PlayStation 3, PS Vita, and PSP games on their mobile, on their storefront for PC, or even on their mobile app too. Because when I saw that initially, I knew full on well what was going to go on and what it's going to lead to. They are going to full on shut down access to those storefronts relatively soon. I would think maybe in the next couple years. Nintendo did the same thing for the Virtual Console. A lot of those Wii Wii games, you can't get them legitimately. You have to emulate them by chance. So, here's my thought process going into it. If my games are going to go, money that I spent on those digital content stuff, I am getting these systems now and not waiting a couple years and they're them skyrocketing in price because here's the thing, the PlayStation Vita, that system is already starting to go up in price. There are import Model 2000s going on sale on Amazon where they the new price of them are close to $500. The used ones are starting to drip are starting to trend up in price. There will be some that say like 120 or 130 but they don't incorporate the shipping costs, which if you are like a used seller in Japan or something like that, you're going to tack that on, obviously. But what I'm trying to get at is, now is the perfect time. If you're a collector and you want to get stuff, if you want to have... Basically, what Sony did not bother to go forth and transfer to the PS4, or probably don't have interest to bring to the PS5, now's your time to go and collect these games. Some of them are super cheap. Some of them will be collector's items. And quite honestly, this is the same reason why I've kept the Wii U. Because with the Wii U, I feel like it's going to be another Sega Saturn situation in terms of their games, where... There are games that people obviously are going to want to get. They're going to want certain games that never left that system. You know, and so that's kind of basically how the PlayStation Vita is right now. Where the games that are most sought after are some of those, like some of those like uh, rare JRPGs that are niche, that people have heard good things about didn't buy them back in the day but are probably going to be probably double their initial price the Saturn had that for years where you had games like say Panzer Dragoon, Orta that game, that game is so fucking expensive I mean I remember back in the day that game being expensive to where it's like over $500 for that thing used but now it's like over a grand <laughs> <laughs> The collector mindset in me is like, you know what, I want to go through and I want to play the games that I want to play. And because I don't have any interest right now in playing on the Series X and the PS5, why would I want to go through and invest in those systems if my main thought is to rekindle some of the fun that I had while playing some of my older games and enjoying currently what I have available on the PS4, the Switch, and the Xbox One. I have not fully enjoyed this generation for all it's worth so yeah there is that but that's not even god that's not even been what i've been mostly playing jesus okay so for <laughs> what else i've been playing this week i played more destiny 2 i had a good moment last night where i was with my friends we've been chasing after this shotgun not shotgun but the sniper rifle inside of the whisper mission right and this is one of those missions where it's going to disappear come two weeks from now. We've been trying to get this damn weapon for like the past couple months. I am on Destiny 2 off and on, doing this and that. But then last night, oh, actually no, leading up to last night, like on Friday night, my friend and I, we decided to try to see if we can go through and see how far we can get just the two of us. We were quite literally a half of life bar away from defeating the third 
of like the three bosses that we had to go through and do. So to put into perspective, you go through five different rooms. You start off trying to do this all this platforming stuff, and there's shortcuts that you can go through and do. So we got used to this whole routine of going through these particular spots. But finally, when you go into the first room for combat, you got to clear out that room. You go to the second one, clear that one out. The third room, it starts getting a little bit more complicated to where there's more blights that you have to go through their force fields and destroy. And from there, once you clear out that room, you have to go through and clear out these hobgoblins, which are fucking sniping you from across the map. And so what I had got, what I had did, I invested inside of a combat bow for my warrior. So I went through, sniped the three hobgoblins that are up on the higher ends, while there are some, like, uh, taken scion, like, warriors down below trying to shoot at you. And that leads you to the final room. And where the final room happens is you have, like, about seven or eight blights that you have to take out that are force field and clear out all these, like, heavy and, like, uh, medium size like, uh, taken warriors, right? that are definitely kind of hard to take down unless you have some that's armor-piercing rounds, whether you have, like, uh, say, weapons that use primary source of ammo. So I got it to where I was using a auto rifle called the Gnawing Hunger, which had, like, uh, I'm not to say, not, like, kinetic damage, but it has a particular types of damage that kind of looks like a buzzsaw. I forgot what that's called. But uh, it's that plus my combat bow. We spent a couple hours Friday night going through, and we almost, with the two of us, went through all three of those uh, bosses. So it's like there's three bosses. Once the final phase of the thing goes on, you have to dodge a whole lot of their freaking minions, too, because these guys respawn if you kill them. That, in and of itself, leads to last night, to where my friend and I, we went through... Before our uh, third friend, our other friend, joined us. So it was the two of us. We ran through that mission like once before. We weren't successful. We may have gotten like a... Uh, we defeated one boss, but the other one was like close to half. As soon as my... As soon as our third friend came on, went through on the first attempt, the first legitimate attempt, he was having trouble going to the platforming stuff before going into the first room. Once he joined us and once we went through, I think it was like, oh boy. Yeah, I think that's like the first or second attempt. We defeated all three of those bosses with like a minute and 30 seconds left. Now, bear in mind, it's a 20 minute time limit. So we have to go through and do all this stuff in the span of 20 minutes. And we made it to where we had a minute and 36 seconds left. And all three of us earned that freaking sniper rifle that exotic sniper rifle that has like almost a max impact rating (laughs) but there's one last game one last game that i've played this week i beat persona 5 royal oh boy i went and i followed through what i was going to say last week I was having a, I was having one fucking fun time playing this game, and now, when this week came along, I made it a point to where I wanted to finish this game, and my God, Tyler, this game is the total package. There were story elements I was not expecting. There was definitely some awesome moments in regards to the last bits that led up to the final conclusion of this game. There was a moment where I thought this thing was... There was one point where I thought where this game was going to be over after doing this and doing that. And all of a sudden, not only was that not it, but you go through all these other bits of turmoil or other things that you had to go through and do before facing off against the actual final boss. And let me tell you something. This final boss, even though I was on easy... I didn't want to go on the one below easy because I really wanted to experience this game inside of those skill sets. My God. I did not want this game to end. I honestly did not want this game to end. And that's 
coming from someone who played this game for 123 hours. Wow. This game held my attention from when I started it, and I I saw my PSN stuff. I started that game April 1st. I took a couple months off for a break, but from April 1st all the way upwards to October. So it's like May, June, July. Six months. August, September. Six months. I played that game off and on for six months. Accumulated 103, 123 hours. Gameplay, fantastic. Story, definitely superb. The content in this game... And you know what really pisses me off? I got the great, I got the good ending, but because I did not go through a maximize a social link where I needed to maximize a, a social link, I couldn't get to the Persona Five Royal content. So there's even more content that I can huh. go through on my game, my new game plus, that I can actually experience and get the true ending. But the ending that I did got, that was satisfying. That was the original Persona 5 ending. But like I was saying before, I played this game so much. I learned so much about the inner workings of the characters, a lot of the social links, a lot of the definite things that I wanted to go through and do. I did not want this game to end. That is a rarity. The last time I experienced that was when I played Persona 4 Golden, and I beat it in 2013. Nice. I have not felt that type of feeling in quite a long time, and I can see why that people consider Persona 5, just Persona 5 in general, is the best JRPG on the PS4. And quite honestly, this is a hot contender for Game of the Year. Hmm. This is my hot contender for Game of the Year. Nice. If I don't... Let's see... There are definitely a couple games I want to go through and play and finish before the time we have to divulge. But let me tell you something, Tyler. This is a game I want to keep. This is a game I want to play. I'm highly thinking about replaying this game again sometime soon. It is, on another level, above Fire Emblem Three Houses for me. That's how I feel about it. Fire Emblem Three Houses, I went through two gameplays last year. Got a whole lot of stuff going through. And guess what? The new Game Plus for Persona 5 Royal is almost akin to Fire Emblem Three Houses. Hmm. The only difference is the social links don't translate, you know, from playthrough to playthrough. Yeah. So I can't just automatically max something. It's due to story elements. So I don't want to mess up the story elements with that. But you do get all your money all your weapons all the personas that you did craft and going through and i unlocked like about 40 almost 50 percent of my persona like compendium on my first playthrough hmm. and i still had elements where i had to try to maximize certain social links i was still going through and unlocking options in order to create more types of creatures for me to use this has so much good content filled in it that it is quite honestly like it is fantastic tyler this is definitely the type of game i would honestly suggest to people if they want a game that's going to last you for maybe about six months maybe three to six months and if you love jrpgs and if you've never played a persona game before this is the ideal entry point this is a game that should be on multiple different platforms it should be on switch it should be on steam this should be experienced by anyone. I say that knowing full well this is a game that's easily accessible, I feel, to a whole bunch of different people. You could play it on easy, you could play it on hard, you could do whatever you want to it. The trophy list doesn't reflect upon, like, say, the difficulty levels in terms of playing it on easy, normal, and hard. That's ideal, in my honest opinion. But the biggest satisfaction you'll get is when you finally figured out it's like when you finally figure out okay if i work with my teammates and stuff and do this 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 and that and understand their attacks and their supports and their buffs their debuffs and like how i can go through and improve 
like a specific persona by using these skill cards to improve a certain aspect of their attributes or having them or having like a uh, member of your teammate level up to max and that's the thing i got all of my characters up to uh, their mid 80s and they learned all of their attacks and i was able to go through and have abilities that i learned that covered their weaknesses so they didn't have any type of weaknesses towards the end of my playthrough. So, honestly, this is a fantastic game. And I really don't have any more to share about it. No, that's awesome, though. <laughs> yeah, that's cool. I'm glad, you know, finally got that monkey up your back for that game. You know, yep. See how interesting to see if that holds up. You know, we got about two more months before we sit down and record our Game of the Year podcast, so... See it's if it, be a crazy two months. Yeah, see if it uh, sticks. Uh, yeah, definitely. Because I, I I got a shit ton of games I'm playing. I'm playing before then too, so mm. uh, should be interesting. But uh, yeah, I think that's gonna wrap it up for this week, guys. Um, one more of us. We are on Facebook. Uh, talk or talk. Well, wow, what the fuck I'm saying? Facebook, Twitter, YouTube, uh, iTunes, pretty much anywhere. Podcast, pause or cast. We are there. Uh, on Twitch TV. Uh, drunk dash. Uh, drunk dash pod. Wow. Drunk Nerds Podcast. Um, <laughs> also, if you want to follow us, we'll both be streaming on Extra Life Day uh, yep. for sure. Um, he is twitch.tv slash Colonel Gables. I am twitch.tv slash gingerboy507. Check us out in those places. Uh, last, uh, of course, go to uh, extra-life.org. Um, but like I said, go uh, follow us all those places. Facebook, Twitter, YouTube, iTunes, pod- anywhere podcast services are, we're there. Uh, like, follow, subscribe, five stars, comment, whatever you can do to help us. We really appreciate it. Shares help us as well. So whatever you guys can do, we really would appreciate it. So until next time, I was host, I was Tyler. And I have been Colonel Gables. So until next time, everyone, have yourself a fine day. Most importantly, thank you for listening to another episode of the Drunk Dash Nerds Podcast. Hey, Gables. Yep. Too sweet. Too sweet, man. Bye, guys. See ya. to me beers there anyways we're on itunes now so go on there check us out and if you like us leave us a review and we'll even shout you out and jack will send you his credit card number